Hey guys, hope you enjoyed last Friday's video when we talked about tonal chords and progressions. This week we want to talk about articulations. Articulations can be a very complex issue. It can be very genre oriented and it can also have a lot to do with the way your guitar is set up, the type of setup that you're using, the type of effects you're using with it, and things like that. So we're going to be covering some basic articulations just to have a basic library to start from because the concept is that you know, we had talked one time about the story about Eddie Van Halen was on tour with Sammy Hagar and Eddie was off getting drunk somewhere and Sammy wanted to plug into his amplifier with his guitar and sound like Eddie Van Halen for a while well he started playing and realized he was looking at the technician he was like hey bro why don't I sound like Eddie Van Halen well it was because of his technique and it wasn't so much of about his articulations that he was using or that he didn't slide like Eddie slid when he did a slide. It was because of his technique. The technique can be a little bit different because Eddie learned to use his technique in a certain way and to pick a certain way, to slide a different way, to do his vibrato a certain way just on one simple technique like his slides that gave it a certain type of tone. You know, does that make sense in a certain type of timber and sound? And that wasn't how Sammy learned, and it wasn't part of his technique. So it was, it was never going to sound like Van Halen. It wasn't that he didn't understand the articulation of sliding, and it wasn't that he didn't understand the articulation of doing a slight pinch harmonic to get a little bit of harmonic texture to it before he slid. It's that his whole technique was not the same as Edward Van Halen. So... The technique had also become part of a, um, the articulation had also become part of a technique. So those two things had been integrated into the sound that was happening when Eddie was playing. That, you know, Sammy did been playing for years and didn't realize that and he couldn't understand why it didn't sound like Eddie Van Halen. Because the two, those two things combined caused the guitar to sound the way it did when Eddie did a slide. And, and it was, you know, it wasn't the, way, the same as Sammy Hagar's technique. So it didn't work and it didn't sound like Sammy Hagar, even though he was using the same articulation. So that's a huge concept to get through your head and to understand. Because as you mess around with certain types of articulations, the way that you voice those articulations and the technique that you use is a whole nother subject. We may or may not get into some of that. We probably will as videos go along. We talk about abstract concepts because technique is an abstract concept. Something like trying to explain Eddie Van Halen's complete technique would be you could come to a pretty good understanding, and I have a fairly good understanding of it, but exactly what he was doing, exactly how he was doing it, the only way that that's going to come is from Eddie's mouth. Right, so the only way he's gonna, you're gonna understand exactly how he holds the pick, exactly how he gets a little bit of a pinch of harmonic, and exactly how he holds the slide, exactly how he does his little teeny bit of vibrato, and watching it over and over, and completely copying his technique with the exact guitar and with the same amplifier system to sound just like Edward Van Halen. That that's a whole nother subject and study. So you will find that as you practice the articulations, you may pay to investigate some of those techniques um, on type of styles or type of techniques of guitarists that you really like that sound. But that sound can have a whole lot of components there, the, the articulation they're using, the technique, the way they're doing it, the type of guitar they're using it, the way they have their guitar set up, the way they have their amplifier set up, the type of amplifier they're using, the type of effects, all those things can come into play, even sometimes the type of strings that it really are a part of the entire sound that they have when they voice their articulations. So you really have to keep that in mind. But that will come. The first, What we want to talk about is basic articulations. Most basic articulations are pretty simple, and there's not that many. There's, there's really not that many of them. Um, there's a bunch of abstract ones that have come along. There's a bunch of different named ones. There are libraries of art articulations that are very similar to other articulations that are basically seem to be additions or are two art types of articulations that are connected together some way. 
So that can get a little bit complex. What we're going to talk about is just some basic articulations so that you understand the basic ones that are happening and being able to use every one of those as basic building blocks and connect them together. Sometimes other articulations are formed by combining two different types of articulations or three different types of articulations to form a third hybrid articulation. And that can be very true sometimes in some instances, like we were talking about Edward Van Halen's slide, that he puts a little bit of pinch harmonic on it by the way he holds his pick, and he slides it a certain way, and he emphasizes it with a, the way he does his vibrato that maintains that, that whiny kind of honky tone kind of thing that has that, in, that distinctive sound. Those are three different articulations that are combined into one basic articulation that he's used to produce some kind of sound as part of his technique. So that's a serious concept to get into your head. The combinations of those producing other hybrid articulations that can be seen as a hybrid combination of articulation and technique together. Because not only are they combined, but also the technique of how he did it, it can be a whole other thing combined with the guitar and the setup and all those things. So that can get very complicated. But if you understand those building blocks, of what's happening there and what is being combined to produce certain things that you know what to start looking for you start you, know, you start looking at what kind of articulation he's doing what kind of hybrid combined articulations might he be doing there what kind of technique is he doing which you would more than likely either have to experiment listen to a lot of his music or really find a video that he's explaining exactly how that works you know and you know experimentation so and with that so you got that combination on, and then you have the type of guitar the way it's set up and the amplifier so you know the things that you need to be looking for to emulate some type of articulation combined with a technique and amplifier system guitar system to work it out what's going on there uh, but we don't want to get that in depth but it's a good thing to know so that most things you can find out with some investigation if you know what to start looking for which you do now so next but we want to talk about basic articulations because the basic articulations are very important because as you understand that some of those basic articulations may not sound earth shatteringly you know you know enlightening that you know once you understand the concepts that we've been talking about tonight that the combinations of those combined with different techniques will give those articulations different type of effects and textures and tones and things like that and so it sheds a whole new light on the articulations themselves so they're not so bland as we said we'll, we'll talk about the basic articulation of a slide you know that basic articulation can really evolve into all kinds of other things with combining with other types of articulations and door techniques and effects amplifiers and all kinds of stuff so that's a very simple concept to get in your head but to begin experimenting with them you should have at least a good understanding of the basic articulations that are possible so that as bland as maybe some of them sound that you have a list of them and you experiment with them you know with the way you have a guitar set up the type of guitar you're using and start you know messing around with your technique to where you get a distinctive sound that you're happy with and it will cause you to experiment or investigate to help that evolve does that make sense because the longer you play the more it's going to evolve anyway so anyway uh, welcome to tonight's video and tonight we're going to talk about articulations I'm sorry for the long introduction but it's kind of important when we talk about that and I hope you enjoy the video give me a moment and I'm going to pull out my guitar and we are going to talk about some of the most basic articulations so that you have a good solid foundation of basic articulations to work with to combine and to start applying your own technique and way that you use them okay we're going to talk about a few articulations just the most basic ones the first thing that I wanted to address that we've gotten to the point now we talked about tonal chords next last weekend and we've covered all the basic music structures of basic building blocks that we have to work with music theory now we come to a point where we're ready to really start playing the guitar a little bit 
And as we play, articulations are going to be kind of important. Uh, just the basic ones. Now, I'm not, we can get into all kinds of advanced techniques, advanced theory, and all kinds of things like that, and how those technique and articulations can sometimes become integrated and combined and blurred a little bit. So there's a couple things that we wanted to talk about really quick. The first thing I want to talk about is this. I keep this in front of me every time I practice. Remember form. How I hold my body, how I hold my left hand, how I hold my right hand, how I hold my pick. Press hard, press firm. Clear, clarity and accuracy are important. Play with feelings and emotions. That may sound funny, but that is a huge thing that I look at all the time and I keep close to me when I'm practicing and I'm writing and improvising and things like that and messing around to remind myself to do those things so I don't get lazy about it. Sometimes you just pick up the guitar and you start to actually play once you understand these basic building blocks that sometimes, you know, you just get going and you're not really paying attention to what you're doing. So you don't have as much fun because you're not doing it well. So it's very important to remember and I reiterate that all the time. The next thing we want to talk about is basic holding of your guitar and how that is because people ask me about holding guitar form and things like that. Let's talk about the basics. When I hold my guitar pick, I try to keep my thumb, if you look at it, basically straight across there, fairly down low, but somewhere in the middle, depending on if you're picking and you're strumming or you're trying to pick notes. But I'll keep it fairly flat across there. It's fairly level if you look. And then you see how my first finger is, that the side of it's laid across the pick on the side of it and fairly the full length of it. Does that make sense? And I kind of turn it off to the side a little bit like that. I'll bring it in a little bit like that when I do a pinch harmonic or something like that. That way I've got as much finger, as much thumb and as much finger on the pick as possible for it to be as stable as possible. Does that make sense? Except for when I start doing some other kinds of picking and some kind of strumming, I hold the pick way out here like this. Flamenco kind of stuff. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And it'll be held way out there so I can get this slappity sound happening all over the place. But that's part of a technique. We're just talking about the basics. And holding the guitar, it's really good, this basic rounded in at the bottom, to really have that planted right there in the middle of your crotch and have it at about this kind of an angle. And that's a classical form to start with. Holding your pick nice and firm like that. A good place to start. It's hugged into your body good. Right in your crotch. And then you've got your hand level. Which means trying to keep that this finger is as much looking like the fret going up and down. And at the angle it is. Wherever which angle you've got there as the guitar. So that takes a little bit of practice. But having it as straight as that fret as you're going across there that's playing a good classical form now when you this is a good starting point now if you watch the video that i did the other day when i was playing that funky kind of rock kind of thing that you may have noticed that my hand was like this you know it really was because i had to deaden strings with my thumb there was other things that i was trying to do to get certain harmonic tones and textures that i had to hold the guitar like this it didn't i couldn't do what I needed to do with a classical form. I was trying to deaden strings with my thumb and I was trying to get some bends, some, some support from other fingers when I was doing some vibrato kinds of things. It was very hard to do like this. I had two, it was causing other strings to sound and cause other noise. So this was very helpful playing it that way. So it wasn't as much as I was slouching is that to do what I wanted to do with that kind of rocky, bluesy, funky groove thing with the distortion that I needed it like that. I needed my hand like that to perform it so it did so it sounded good. So that can be one of those things and just a very simple example so that when you start playing styles and techniques and genres, just remember that classical form and how you should be holding your guitar with your back straight so that when you deviate from that, that any time you do deviate from that, it's for a reason. It's not for no reason. It's not just because you're lazy, you know. I play guitar like this because I'm lazy, son of a bitch. You know, I mean, it's like 
You know, there's some reason that you formulate in your mind why you do this, why you do that, why you bend for a little bit, why you're doing it, why you change the hold your pick, whatever. You're moving your body and holding the guitar that there's a reason and a good solid reason why you do that or don't. And so that's very simple. Remember that concept and what we talked about about that. And you're, you know, that's a good starting point. Now that we've talked about the basics of fundamentals of acoustic of, of, of music theory, and you're starting to work on articulations and playing. So and and playing around in the scales and modes and you know and, and using the tonal structures and starting to experiment and improvise and, and applying it to what you might already know. So that that's a very simple concept to understand. The next simple concept I wanted to get through to you is tools. All right, I keep a tuner on to hit my headboard. Some people don't because they don't think it looks cool. I don't care. I like my guitar in tune, bro. I just do. I, I don't care if I got to check it. Something doesn't sound right. I check it right now. I don't mess around, dig around, look for my damn tuner. It's right there. The next tool that I got that I want to share with you is I keep my guitar slider on here. This is a really cool tool. I've got a little piece of Velcro and I've got it stuck on the bottom of the headstock. And I can pull it off there and do some slide thing real quick. Slap it back up there. I've got it on my finger. And I can just slap it back up there with that Velcro and pull it off there anytime I want. I can just stick my hand on there, pull it off. Does that make sense? And put it onto my finger, pull it off the Velcro, go to work, slide it back on there, slap it on, pull my finger out. It's a really cool tool. It's as important as an articulation that the tools that you find that are cool, that are fun, that you can do some little cool thing and then, you know, get the tool back on there are really cool. Capo, I keep my capo on my guitar headstock. It's a really cool tool. You can do some really cool open tuning pickings and hammer-ons and pull-offs, all kinds of crazy stuff. That's really kind of cool, even simple stuff. Country, western, jazz, blues, all kinds of music, bro. Ray Gay. You know, so I mean, and it's a cool tool because you can change. You can go and do that, place that up on the F sharp fret or the G fret board and experiment around and play it in key there. You know, and, and with uh, doing open tuning kind of stuff to where you're doing some really cool licks and runs that you can play open. And it's a really cool tool once you understand how to use it, you know, and it's not that difficult. Basically, if you look at the open string, you're playing C, right? When So if you're playing C major, that the third interval is E, and it's E Phrygian. E Phrygian in the form of mode E Phrygian. <laughs> So it's the open tuning. So you remember where we put the capo. You can do it. There's th there's three different ways. Well, I'm not going to talk about There's a few other places you can play it. They're all, all the strings are pressed down. Aeolian is another one that you can put on. But that's the open tuning. So you can put it in here. If you put it up here, then it's the Phrygian mode that you can play open. And you know the modes. And you know that's the Phrygian mode in the minor key, the relative minor. So if you were like playing G here, or you went, you put it on the third fret on the F sharp fret that you'd be playing, you know, F sharp minor, which is the relative minor of A. Does that make sense? Wait a minute. No, that's wrong. I'm so sorry. That's so wrong. <laughs> but anyway, it's the Phrygian mode. So in open tuning, it's the Phrygian mode in C. So that because all the notes E F G, you know, this is G flat or F sharp. So it's the Phrygian mode open. Does that make sense? So you just remember that and you put it anywhere. Or you can press it somewhere and it's the Aeolian mode. Because the Aeolian mode goes straight across, covers all the strings straight across, all the notes across one fret. So it could be the Aeolian mode anyway. Anyway, it's a cool tool to experiment around with and have fun with. The next thing I've got, this thing up here, that deadens the strings a little bit. Some people say it's cheating. I don't think it's cheating. It's a cool tool. This thing you put really lightly on here, and it deadens the lower strings a little bit. For some things I do, that way that they still sound, it doesn't completely deaden them, but it reduces um, string noise. If you plucked a note and this kind of stuff when you're playing along, these other strings might be ringing out a little bit from not being deadened. This stops that. That way, all the, the, it's... Re it increases clarity of what you're playing. A lot of open string vibration doesn't happen with that on there. It's a really cool tool. And picks. I got this pick on here. This is the most floppy pick you've ever seen in your life. This one's a little bit thinner, a little bit thicker, not much. 
this is my thick pick that I use that I keep right on here. And then I've got a little jazz teardrop jazz pick that's really cool for fast runs and playing jazz kind of stuff. And these things are really cool right here. These ones, these little things clip on to the, onto the headstock and they've got a little groove inside them. You just stick your pick in it. Does that make sense? I got two of them on there because I keep four picks on my headstock. But those are just some basic tools that, you know, that, that you can use to to help your playing and that's a really cool con i mean my headstock looks like some kind of mess doesn't it look like what the hell is that <laughs> but i mean i use all this stuff i love it you know does that make sense for different kind of stuff and having fun articulations and creations and, and, and improvising all kinds of stuff so that's some very simple things the next thing i want to talk about we talk about the sim we're talking about since we're gotten on to playing that you know we're going to talk a little bit about articulations hold on the next thing is your tone knobs and your picks all right it's really important concept that your volume knob all the way down or really low somewhere medium or up louder is going to affect the way you play it's an important tool to understand it just not in an all the way up position all the time and turn it down to halfway turn it down to low and play around with it use those three at least those three settings have it loud middle and low and learn to use it as that you know so and you might fudge it this way or that way at any one of those settings but that concept that that is going to have an effect on what you're doing and cause your guitar to sound different same thing with the tone knob the tone knob the same thing up brassy down bassy somewhere in the middle at least those three places and you fudging somewhere in between there is another really cool tool to help with your playing and to do some really cool things and your pickups i've got three pickups i've got a five-way pickup switch that I use for different things. Most guitarists, as they play, they'll find they use one pickup or a couple different pickups that, you know, that are, you know, that they are go-to pickups or that they use a lot. But if you like to mess around with other different kinds of things and have fun and experiment, that, you know, that, that I've got five different tones there that can really, I can get really brassy, I can get really bassy, I can sing a Les Paul or a Strat or whatever really quickly with with the, the selection of pickups that I have on here and the whammy bar whether you like the whammy bar or not it's a cool tool every now and then you just might whether or not that's the only time you use it you may you know you just like a country western rock heavy metal jazz blues reggae whatever it's a cool tool have one what the heck bro i mean you may not use it all the dang time you might not but don't i mean it's a tool bro if it's a tool that can cause some kind of music thing some kind of cool accent that you may use even if you don't use it a lot it's cool even some very simple articulations using the this bar are really cool you don't have to become Steve Vai, wah, hold it upside down and dangle it from, you know, you know, your tooth and your, 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 your earring for a half an hour and make my, yeah, I mean, you don't have to go there, bro, but it is a cool tool that can do some cool things. So use it, you know, have one, you know, so that's just some basic things as far as that's concerned. So let's talk about, then we've talked about that a little bit. So we've talked about guitar tone and setting up the guitar and the amp and getting a good basic starting point. We talked about that in that one of the videos that I put on there about setting your guitar up and your amplifier up to where you've got a little bit of reverb, a little bit of delay, reverb, delay, and chorus. Through three most basic things as for starting blocks. Have just a little bit of delay on there. Add a little bit of reverb and a little bit of chorus. Not enough chorus where it sounds like chorus, just so it adds good full body to whatever you're playing. So besides that, you know, now you're ready to just play a little bit. So articulations. Articulations and, and can get really confused and mess, messed up with, with style, genre, certain types of players, their technique, and their style. You know, they can get start to get incorporated to where that, that the basic thing that's happening can get kind of, you know, blurry so let's just talk about the most basic articulations that you use as building blocks to connect them together like music theory and things they they're basic building blocks the same thing with licks when you start creating a basic lick library that each one of the licks you do are just like articulations you have little short phrases 
that you connect together to make longer phrases as passing tones and leads, melody lines. Does that make sense? So it's the same kind of concept that articulations can be used the same way as little short phrases or articulations attached to short phrases, but you can attach them together, slide and bend. You can combine them together and that becomes kind of a combined hybrid um, articulation, correct? So, and there's lots of ways to do that. So as you mess around with them and you play with them, you'll find all kinds of cool things to do with them, but at least understand the basics. The basics that we're talking about, the first basic articulation we have <coughs> is a couple of different ones. The first one is picking, all right? You've got picking that you just hold your pick and you pick. Whether you're just picking down, whether you're picking back and forth, or you're strumming, right? So these are some really basic picking articulations and style ways to, you know, way to articulate using the pick, okay? To try and keep that sound as simple as possible. So that's really simple. And the next thing is a couple other things that would be finger picking, which would be just using your thumb on the lower string and your other fingers to finger pick in different patterns, using different patterns, creating different patterns, using different patterns to play finger picking styles and techniques and or plucking chords and or plucking arpeggios and things like that. The next thing would be hybrid picking. Hybrid picking would be picking and using the other three fingers. That can be a really cool technique no matter what style. And it's a good thing to learn and practice a little bit to use every now and then. Because you can pick with one finger. And be plucking with the other ones. Or you can finger pick. Every now and then you can play some little finger picking thing. Where you've got at least four fingers going. You may not have the thumb going, but you got four going. Because with the pick and other three fingers. And you can do two cool little lead things and stuff like that. That, that may be looked at as a style or some type of technique, but it basically can, is, can be very directly related to how you're voicing your articulation. So it's a really cool tool to make a note of and, you know, at least understand and, and use it a little bit, practice with it, know that it's there. So the next thing I'm going to talk about is playing soft, medium, and loud. We talked about that on the volume knob. Same thing with your playing, being able to play really soft, Playing about a medium, being able to play loud. Does that make sense? Those three, try to understand that there's, in classical music, there's all kinds of different levels of loudness all over the place. There's like, you can get, you can talk to somebody, it be like 15 or 20. And the reality of you knowing what he's exactly talking about, you're going to learn in time. Or from playing that type of music a lot. And I mean, a lot. So, keep it simple at first. You've got very quiet. Somewhere in the middle and loud. All right, start there. You can fidge back and forth in there. You might come up with all kinds of different kinds of loudness, but at least understand that those are articulations and tools. Playing nice and really soft, playing medium, and playing really loud. Does that make sense? Just, we're, not, we're not talking about using the volume knob for that right now. This is just in your technique and your style, how you voice it. Play soft, play medium, and play loud. That's an important articulation. It's a huge tool because that thing, if you remember it and you practice using it, that you will most definitely start incorporating it into things you're doing. And you may come up with three different, more than three different loudnesses for whatever you're doing. You might come up with a bunch. You might decide to get into classical music. So anyway, just the basics for now, right? So we talk about that. The other most basic concept is you've got Let's talk about some of the most basic ones. The most basic ones is picking something. We all know that. I mean, we all know to pick something, right? So next after that, we'd be coming to hammer-ons and pull-offs. Hitting the note, hammering on the next note, possibly hammering on again, right? Hammer-ons or pull-offs. Hitting the note, plucking it or picking it, and then pulling off using that finger to almost pick Pull off and pick, it kind of works out the same. Hammer on, a little different. But when you pull off, that you're actually, when you pull off, you're actually almost kind of picking the next note below it. Because you're not only just put letting off, you're letting off and causing a little bit of a pick. Does that make sense? It's almost like, you're almost like, it's not just letting off it, whereas the hammer on is just hammer on there. Whereas the pull off is actually, you're kind of putting some pressure on it on that note that's been struck, and then you're kind of actually pulling off 
and using it almost like a pick to voice the, the note below it. Does that make sense? So very basic articulation of hammer-on pull-offs. That's very simple. The next most basic articulation is taps. So the basic understanding of a tap is just basically tapping the fret. So, you, I mean, the concept's not that difficult. You tap the fret, and then you do the same thing that we talked about doing on a pull-off. You kind of pull on and give some pressure, and you actually cause a picking effect. That was exaggerated, but you cause a picking effect. Hammer on it. Same concept as hammer on. Hammer on hard enough to voice the note, and then you're actually causing a picking effect to pull off. So a lot of times I'll use it. I'll hammer pull. I use my taps like that. I can deaden the other strings. So when I pull off, I'm stopping any other deadened voice, any open strings from voicing with my left hand. You can see where my left hand is deadening the other strings up above this note, and my right hand's deadening any of the strings that might be on this side. Does that make sense? So I got a nice clear note that. That makes sense. This finger. Sorry, that didn't come out really clear, but I'm trying to show it. I'm doing it really slow. It's kind of hard sometimes. That I'm got letting it deaden these strings here so they don't sound. And this hand over here is deadening the other strings to make sure this note's not get interrupted by anything. So that's a real simple technique. It works the same as hammer on pull-offs, just with your finger. And I recommend staying with one. I'll use two sometimes to do some techniques, but most of the time I just use one. So that's a very simple technique. The next most simple technique we'd be talking about would be, let's talk about slide. Slide is a very simple technique. Hit it. Slide. Try to keep it as clear as possible. The passing tones from when you slide from one place to another, you don't want any of the notes in between to really sound. You don't want them to be like, you know, like if you're doing something like glissando. You know, you don't want them to sound, you just want it to sound like there's some kind of slide happening between those two notes. Does that make sense? That's a very important technique and very important to practice doing so it sounds clear and, and with clarity and sounds nice and clear. So after that, we talk about bends. Three different types of bends that are very simple that you should start out with and know. And you can create all kinds of different kinds of hybrid bends. But basically, from here, or from here, to there. Bending up. Sometimes you use two or three fingers behind it on the string underneath it to give support. Or you do a pre-bend where it's basically pushed up to that note. And you want to bend down to the note below it. Or you want to hit that note, bend up and come down. Does that make sense? Now you can find all kinds of different ways to do that, but those are the three most basic that you should practice on and do them very well and very clear and clean. So after you get done with that, let's talk about something that's really important that everybody runs into is vibrato. So vibrato is very important. So there's a couple different ways. Let's talk about a few different ways we do vibrato. First vibrato, we just go up. So if I hit this note, I'm going to go up, pushing it up and letting it come back down. So, and it's causing a vibrato effect. Okay, that's the first way. The second way is back and forth. So you've got this, you've hit this note. And you actually rock that finger back and forth. It's a different kind, it's got a different texture, but it's another type of vibrato. A lot of times it works in a slow motion kind of way. It has a really nice effect. The next one is circular vibrato. You have Steve Vai likes to use that, to where you actually hit the note. And you actually go in a circular form. This finger, you actually move in a circular pattern. So it actually pulls the string down a little bit, comes back to center, pushes it up a little bit, comes back to center, and it revolves like that in a circular pattern because it does that as you as you form that circular pattern, it does that. Here's center, it go, push, pulls it down and pushes it up, pulls it down, and it keeps going past this center here because you got this center here, 
and it starts doing this revolution. Does that make sense? And it's a circular vibrato. And it's got its own unique technique and its own kind of sound that you're going to want to experiment with. At different speeds, it sounds different. <coughs> so, the next one I want to talk about is fast vibrato. So, you talk about we talked about this one, you're going to hit the note. And you are very rapidly just going to shake that hand. Shake it. Really fast. There's no pattern to it. It's just very rapid shaking of that hand. That's another type of vibrato. Alright, so next one is wild vibrato. Wild vibrato can be very interesting sometimes in all kinds of different applications. But the idea of wild vibrato is it basically you've got it starts out it starts out you hit the note and it starts going and then it gets more and more and more and more and more so it's kind of hard to visualize it like that because you got to kind of understand that's what it does till it builds up to some point and then you try to maintain it vibratoing like that so you've got like does that make sense you'll hear that a lot of times with some heavy metal stuff to where you, it sounds like if it doesn't, it's not immediate. It just kind of hits, and then it starts going down, and then it builds up to a point, and then it's trying to maintain this wild waving back and forth because it's basically pushing it up and pulling it down. Does that make sense? Sometimes some guitars will do it going up. Some will pull it down. But it doesn't really matter because it's just it building up to a wild it's peak, and then it's trying to maintain that wild, that wild variation in vibrato. Does that make sense? That takes practice, and but is another type of vibrato. So those are some very important first initial types of articulations. Some of the next articulations we'll talk about, let's talk about a really simple one, harmonics. Harmonics basically are, when we talk about harmonics, there's a couple of different ones that are important articulations you, you should have on your basic building blocks for articulations. The first one is pinch harmonics. Basically, the whole idea of pinch harmonics is this. If I put my, this, pretend this finger is my thumb on the other side of my finger, all right? So the understanding of it is that this, this string has been plucked here with the pick, if you can see it, that the pick is actually hitting the string here. I know you can't see it like that. The straight pick is actually hitting the string here, and the thumb is acting like this finger here that's holding on that that's hitting that harmonic so the pick is initializing the pluck of the string and the string is then hitting the back the side of your thumb at that harmonic point on the string that's causing the harmonic so if I hold my if I do this here I put this note here and I come up here and I go The initial part of the pick is hitting the string, and then the side of the thumb is hitting the string next, and it's not deadening it. If it's not hitting on, on a part of the string that's causing a harmonic, it'll cause it to go dead. But if it hits a part of the string that there's a harmonic resonance point at, then it causes a harmonic. So you got to kind of search around. <laughs> It does sound a really good scream on heavy metal guitar. You can hear it. There, it's just deadening. Because the string's hitting it, and then the thumb is hitting that harmonic. Just like we're talking about, just like the thumb is going to cause that. Not that like, the, like I showed you. So that's the first type of harmonic that takes some practice. <coughs> so you want to practice and just remember that the, the string, the pick is plucking it, and then that string is hitting the side of your thumb uh, at that harmonic point on the string that causes that resonance. Okay, so that's a very simple concept. The next one is going to be a tap harmonic. That's very simple. If you go to open string, you go 12 frets up, and you go to the very top of the fret and tap, you 
you're going to get a harmonic. So you can do that in chords, in runs. You can do that in, in, in melodies or doing arpeggios with chords, form chords, and go 12 frets up to the top of the fret, 12 frets up, and tap out chord patterns. You know, you can do all kinds of cool things with that technique of just tapping. Because you just got, like, let's say it's just open, you just tap on the top of that fret. And it causes a harmonic. So that's another one. The next one is picking it. And this is really simple. Picking that harmonic like this. You'd say we're going to do it open, but it could be a chord pattern just like we talked about tapping it, but doing it this way to where you go to that top of that fret. That pick is being held by my second finger there. So it's picking this note like this, right? But my first finger is lightly resting on the top of that 12th fret right here. Not pressing down, just lightly resting on it while the pick behind it picks it. Does that make sense? So I'm picking behind it, and this finger is actually sitting at the harmonic point lightly on top of the string that causes the harmonic. That's a really cool harmonic technique. So that's very simple. All right, so you've got to cut some harmonic points like on the fifth fret, the seventh, and the twelfth fret, and then it repeats up above the twelfth fret at those kind of places, and sometimes up way high in the fretboard, you got some other points that are just open like that. So that's a really cool thing. Those are that's a really cool articulation to learn to have as part of your tool belt. All right. So the next thing we want to talk about is a, a very simple concept that would be simple concepts like staccato. Staccato. We're going to talk about a few a few um, classical articulations besides those ones. Staccato. That means hitting the note and deadening it. Hitting the note, deadening it, hitting the note, deadening it. Staccato. Whereas you'd be playing it normally if you just let those notes ring out. Does that make sense? So you're hitting it, muting it with your palm. Or raising this finger up a little bit once you've hit it. Playing staccato. So that's a really important articulation. Legato basically works out to, legato is a perfect, a, a good articulation. It works out to hitting, picking this, picking what you're doing as few times as possible and using as much flowing, sliding, hammer-ons and pull-offs as you can as you move around and only picking when absolutely necessary is a really good way to explain legato. There's all kinds of people argue that point about what that means, but the most basic understanding is pick as little as possible, use hammer-ons, pull-offs, slides, anything you can to get away from picking it again, to try and make it nice and smooth and flowing as possible. So that's another articulation that's very important. The next thing is accenting. Accenting is very simple, but something to think about, because it can be very simple as you're playing softer, medium, and then loud. That's an accent. I accented that last note. But you can accent in all kinds of different ways. Anything that you could do to that note to make it different than the other notes, that's an articulation. It's an articulation technique of accenting. And it's very important because if you actually think about accenting something, you know, or accenting a few different notes rather than other notes, and it's in your mind to do that, that that articulation tool becomes very useful as you're experimenting, messing around. So the next thing we wanted to talk about, pizzicatos. Pizzicatos, muted pizzicatos, snap pizzicatos, which basically just means taking these two fingers on your string and picking that pinching it and pulling up on it a little bit on the right hand here and then letting it go. Pizzicatos. And you can do them snap, muted, Those kind of, that's a very cool articulation, very useful. Another articulation is, without getting into many classical terms, is speeding up, slowing down. So being gone, being this does has really hard to do when you're playing in time with something, but it can be a really cool tool if you're just playing by yourself and improvise messing around. And the concept's are really simple. 
Speeding up and slowing down. You know, building up speed or slowing down, digressing in speed, that's a very cool articulation. Another one is 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 quiet, going quiet or going loud. So I'm trying to keep these without getting any technical terms. It's just very simple. That you've got like, let's see here in time. Now, without losing time, just getting louder or softer. And really work on playing that, doing that. You'd be fine. You'd be surprised. It takes some time to work at it to where you can do that well. So another thing is sustain. Sustain. Sustaining a note. It's one really important concept. This ties in directly with breaks. Okay, that means just stop. Take a pause. Don't let any. Don't do anything for a minute. You got. You know, da, da, da. take a break, pause. And that it directly relates to sustain. Those are huge articulation tools. It sounds funny, you're not doing nothing, that's not articulation. Well, it is. <coughs> because it's very important that there's an old saying that sometimes three notes are better than a billion. You know, and that can be reversed. Sometimes a billion notes are better than three notes. But the phrase, it holds true, and it is very true. Sometimes it's very important to hold a sustained note and just keep that note sustained. You know, doing some kind of vibrato or some kind of bend thing or just sustaining it and adding a slight vibrato, it's very powerful. And so is taking a break. Stop. Take a pause. Let, the, let something, the, something going on but underneath your, your melody lines or your lead playing voice out for a minute it's a huge tool that it, it makes brings more clarity to other things that are happening when you're moving around because it causes a light lull and a pause does that make sense to one of them to where there's no focus on you that really causes an aggressive focus back on you when you start again the other one is a nice sustain that really lets you build some kind of a, a climax or suspense or things like that and they're huge articulation tools. Don't be, don't get, I mean, they just are. So think about them and use them. The next one that we want to come to is trills. Trills are an important articulation. Most of the time a trill just means to do that as fast as you can and then try to get back into time when you stop doing that. That's going to be very, sound very funny, but it's, it's very true. Now there's another different way that you can do trill. All that is just hit the one note, hammer on and pull off as fast as you can. It's a cool articulation. And you can go, do all add, you can use other articulations in conjunction with it, going softer, going louder, all kinds of things, you know, to, to emphasize it. And it's a very cool tool. Another way to use trills is to do them in time. Two notes, four notes, A notes, like but you'd be playing in time that type of a trill or four notes eight notes does that make sense now the other concept of the trill is you either start from below go to up and down and up and down or from up to down Does that make sense? And the trill is a very important articulation. So the next one after that, we'd be talking about tremolo. Tremolo is a very important articulation. Two notes, four notes, six notes, eight notes, three notes, whatever. Two notes. Three notes. Four. That's a very important articulation for you to make a note of and to use. The next one would be would be mordants and turns. Mordant is basically a hammer on pull off quickly, rapidly technique. That's you got this first note. Very rapid. Initial note, hammer on up above it, pull off back down to it. Or reverse mordant. Start up above. 
pull off, and then hammer on. Does that make sense? So that mordant is a very useful tool and a good articulation to know. The next one would be turns. Turns are a little bit more complicated, but a basic turn, let's say you want to revolve around this note here, right? So if I'm going to revolve around this note here, I've got this pattern here of that one, two, four, and I want to start up above, hit that, drop down to that, pull off to that, and pull off the next one, then hammer onto that. Simple turn. Or going up. So if you got, you went like that, you go, you'd start with that, this note here, hammer on, hammer on, pull off. Simple turn. Or you can pick that. Another one is a revolving turn to where it's going to go, start with that middle one, go down below, up, up, back to it. Or go up. Go this one, up, down, down, back to it. Turn. Turn is a very cool articulation. So that's some really simple ones. There's a whole lot of other ones. Um, the next one we want to talk about is appagatos. Appagato is a very simple articulation of just muting. So it's a technique that you really need to work on, whether you're strumming or whether you're picking and using it sometimes and sometimes not, that you somehow find some place that your palm is on the bridge here, at the very edge of the bridge where the string actually meets the bridge in the piece of metal, and you come from behind that point and move forward until you get a fairly clear muted sound. So that the string sounds like, that's clean, and then and it's muted, apagados. You and that, and there's different degrees of muting. So the more you bring your hand forward onto the string, the more it's going to deaden it. The more you move backwards, the less it's going to deaden it, and the less muting is going to happen. So the apagato effect is less or more so you really want to experiment with that because using it in different ways can, is a very useful articulation in conjunction with the other ones so okay so we've talked about quite a few basic articulations some of the most important articulations that you need to start out with i mean there are tons of articulations there are tons of techniques and styles that we'll get into but for now those are some of the most basic ones that you really want to understand because as you, you start talking about licks and runs, that those very most basic ones start to be used in conjunction with your technique and style and other, other to possible articulations that you run into and it, that you decide that you like but get to know those ones really well and be able to use those ones really well. And you'd be surprised stringing them together and using them in combination. Are, they're huge articulation tools, and they're the most basic ones you have to work with. So I hope you enjoyed this Friday night's video. Next weekend, we're going to talk a little bit more about technique and style that's going to bring up some other types of articulations that are directly related to actual licks and runs and styles. So don't get like, oh, bro, we all know those. Those are ones you really need to work on and do clear and do well and, and, and really focus on them. So next week we're going to talk about licks and runs and the whole concept of why you want to know certain licks and runs and what important licks and runs you should know know and learn to keep as a go-to library for when you're improvising or writing or to use as passing tones because they're basic building blocks just like these articulations we just talked about that using them somewhere in some way while you're doing passing tones or and and or moving around the fretboard as basic building blocks just like music theory that you connect together to make larger things happen so Peace, hope, love. I hope you enjoyed this Friday night's video on articulations and the most basic ones that we have to work with. And that I hope you made a list of them and you start practicing them so you do them well.
Peace, hope, love. I'll see you in next week's video when we talk about licks and runs. Please ask any questions you might have.